If you want to find moment zero for the sector rotation, it probably came when Mike Weckerly and Paul Sparks teamed up with Neil Johnson to put Difference Capital together. Difference has raised almost $200 million to date and has added some very smart people to its roster and taken away from some of the analysts who contributed to Cantec Letter, by the way, which I'm not happy about. Uh, Tom Liston, Tom Assel, and Dushan Petrovich. Um, today we've got um, the CEO of Difference Capital, Neil Johnson, and the chairman, Mike Weckerly, on the way up. Give him a big hand. Hello, thank you. First, I'd like to thank the Academy and, uh, and you, Angela. Hello. Oh, and 54. Thank you. See, it's funny when I look at a crowd here and I think there's an obligation that people I've either hired or worked with to be here because they know I'll hunt you down. Great to see you. My great calls in the market too, my friend. Uh, good afternoon. You know, everyone knows, well, he's got to do so they know who I am. And I'd like to thank uh, Dick Waddell and the rest of the Cantac team because it's important to have these conferences because I think we're at the beginning of a sectoral move. And it's important not just for the fact that we can make money, not the fact that some, we can flourish companies with capital, but because we're going to create jobs for uh, a lot of great people that are coming out of the universities and being a single father of six kids, I think it's really important that we all look at the bigger picture looking out over the future. One of the things that uh, I'd like to talk about is talk about difference at first and it leads into why I think the sector is really important. Started Difference Capital in June of 2012. Now, I saw there's a lack of funding, you know, mid and small cap companies, which has been my uh, mainstay. I don't think anybody's raised more capital in uh, mid and small cap companies than I myself. And I'm not bragging. I've just done this for 32 years. As people say, I'm older than dirt. They see younger faces on currency sometimes, but uh, I wear makeup today, and uh, that's because uh, they wanted me to. Is that awkward? <laughs> Moto? Thank you. Uh, well, we want to strategically position Difference Capital and capitalize on emerging markets and opportunities. And the growth sector was falling off, and we saw that tech, media, and healthcare was underfunded, underprovided. A year and a half later, we raised approximately $200 million. And what I've seen over 32 years is cycles. You know, marked by many cycles, you usually see a bottom in a sector, and, you know, it's usually fearful. One of the things in the markets is there's two things in the market that I've learned very early in life by losing a lot of money. It's fear and greed. And once you take that emotion out and you do the opposite, you buy fear and sell greed, you understand how to make money. And one of the things you find, and, you know, I'm surprised at the amount of people that are actually coming here to listen to me, because usually there's not that many people, which is why I got into the tech market in 2011-2012, as I did in the mining market as I was at GMP and moved into that sector in 1999 and put a big push and increased our presence. I think that, you know, being a contrarian is sometimes right, but like I said, you know, Seymour uh, Schulich had a great line. He said, Mike, you know, integrity, honesty, loyalty are the key strengths to make money. And once you do that, you know, you will make money. But the key thing is that, you know, have conviction. And the tech teams that I've seen here have survived since the meltdown in 2000. And I think one of the key things of seeing a company that's been around since that era and has grinded through the marketplace, you know, he said, sometimes wrong, but never in doubt. And it's a great statement. So leadership is one of the key things that you have. And I think we have great Canadian companies. We have founded a, a great uh, group of uh, young uh, Canadian entrepreneurs that came out of some great universities. And I think that's one of the key things. If I go back to, you know, like I said, back to the late 90s and gold was $300, you know, not one person would have talked about a gold stock or a mining stock or a material stock and a potash stock. And, you know, I don't think people knew what potash was at the time. And, you know, you look at, look at companies and I've been in two companies my whole life. You know, I started uh, first marathon in 1982 and followed on with a group of great partners in 1995. And a lot of the guys in this room have worked with me at GMP and I was very proud to say I've been a part of a great company that created a lot of great entrepreneurs and they're all spread across the street and I think we're very fortunate to have them here. You know, every gold stock on the planet at that time was less than the micro market cap of Microsoft. And, you know, when you look at things, it's relative value and absolute value. It's an art and a science, but sometimes you, you got to use both, and a lot of it has to do with common sense. You know, one of the things that I look at is, you know, what is the reason why things happen? And the last cycle has driven off an incredible demand that came out of a change in, in a 
political and geographic sector called China and India, and it drove a lot of material demand. And like anything, you know, when things move, all boats rise, but there's no sign that ever says, you know, the market's going to change. And having seen it changing and not noticing it, when you lose money in certain sectors, you understand very quickly that, you know, next time it's not going to happen. Well, it took me three cycles to figure that out. And I'm sure a lot of people will say the same thing here because if we were always correct, we'd be sitting in a beach in Bahamas, you know, making bets on a, you know, carrier pigeon because that's the way the market treats you. There's only two things in the market you need to understand. You need to be there for two reasons, to buy or sell. Other than that, the rest of it, having been in front of a screen for 32 years, you know, the rest of it is all noise. You find a good company with good leadership, with proprietary knowledge or first mover status. Hello, Ty. It's good to see one of my old friends here of the resource sector here. One of the smartest men in the room, definitely smarter than me, Ty Burt. Sorry, Ty, I just owe that to you. And I strongly believe, and I'm on record in 2011 and 12, stating that, you know, the market's gonna change. You know, I changed my investment strategy back and you know, a lot of the movements I made in 09 to 011, people looked at me like, and what's wrong with them? Now, there was probably a few things that people will say is wrong with me, but the investing side is actually I'm pretty good at. You know, I tell people I'm a one trick pony, but it's a good trick. I've never hammered a nail and never painted a house. And that's, that's I'll hopefully I had two tricks. Leave that alone. <laughs> But you know, the US market usually leads the Canadian market by 12 to 18 months in my history. The market stalwarts like Cisco, Microsoft, Apple had already started to move. You know, I look around and the positive performance and the anticipated performance came out when Facebook was about to be launched. It was much anticipated and the market had a gray market for a year, which is probably its biggest mistake. And well, maybe the biggest was the fact that every insider and participant was selling this stock, which is never a good sign. You know, I don't care what the answer is, but when insiders sell, a massive amount of stock, whether they say it's estate planning or whatever it may be, I, I call no in a nice political, nice way. And I think that, you know, when you look at Facebook, you know, which I call now Faceplant, it took the market by surprise, you know, and I think that it took a little bit of the, the, the market exuberance on the tech market, which started, you know, and it, and it got me to kind of th sit back and make, you know, some, some decisions that I wish I didn't make at the time because, you know, one of the stocks that I bought, I won't even say the name, but the gentleman who's the analyst is here right now and he's just going to forever remind me of this. And, uh, you know, I bought the stock at an issue, I think it was a buck 25 or a buck 15, and I think I sold it at a great price of a buck 19 net, and it's now six dollars. And I realized that, you know what, this is a cycle, and the cycle has to get away from trading. And when you see a cycle, it goes for a minimum of eight years to a maximum of 12 years. And we're at the beginning of a great cycle. And then you look at what happened post that, you see the likes of Twitter, like, you know, again, the valuations is based upon what the market will pay for is like artwork. And when it opened up 73%, I knew the market had changed. We haven't seen that since the mid 90s or late 90s. And I think that, you know what, that's a very decisive change and you know, history repeats itself. You know, Google became the bellwether, you know, new innovations at Apple inspired by a great uh, innovator and, and Steve Jobs and a list of new IPOs that led the 2012 and 2013 bull market. You know, I think we're at a situation right now where we're just starting to see the interest come back in here. And it's funny how the investment bankers start to switch from the resource sector back to the tech sector. And all the promoters take all the mining uh, stocks and become shells for tech stocks. We've seen it go back and forth. And that's why I like the Canadian market. You know, it's one of the things that we're a small fish in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a or a big fish in a small pond, yet I think that the Canadian entrepreneurs have always been at the leading edge and the Canadian entrepreneurship never gives up. And I, I know everyone in the room is in the same uh, mindset. Uh, the demise of Northern Telecom, the downsizing of RIM, you know, Difference Capital strongly believes in the dream of a new tech boom. You know, today in the Canadian landscape, that failure, people have criticized the press, they've criticized it in, in speaking, they've criticized it as a group. But again, I remember guys like Art Mesher at Descartes that, you know, when everyone else abandoned the stock and the market cap was trading below cash value, he asked me politely, he says, Mike, you know, please don't go. And at that point, I was already locked in. I think I had a close to like, well, in those days, you didn't have to declare every position you have, but now it's a little bit more stringent. 
And by that time, I was all in. I couldn't leave. And he did an incredible job taking him from a market cap of $70 million to almost a billion dollars. And, you know, what a great career when somebody not only takes a company and transforms it, but creates a new landscape in federated networks. And he's a good friend. I spent some time with him yesterday in Waterloo. And one of the most impressive things about Art is his conviction and his ability to look at a, a situation and integrate people as an entrepreneur and share his ideas with people, especially the younger generation. And I'm very proud to be a friend of him and Jim's and all the other entrepreneurs that came through Waterloo and Ottawa and say, this is an opportunity. You know, Nortel has spawned a lot of entrepreneurial companies. Uh, Research in Motion has and will. We have Magnet Forensics. There's a whole bunch of companies that came out of the group of Research in Motion, and, and I think it's going to be even better and more to come going, going forward. Uh, difference in seeing this opportunity, we think it's uh, a world-class uh, university's uh, environment in the likes of Waterloo, Western Queens, University of Toronto, McGill, uh, Ottawa University, McMaster, and that is the, the crux, and I think that one of the things that Canada has done is really put its dependency and through philanthropy and through hard work has built a great system for engineering and otherwise to make Canada the premier uh, tech company outside of New York City and uh, Menlo or San Francisco. So I'm very proud to be a part and very proud to be a part of what went on in the last cycle. And I think this cycle is going to be better because we have people that really care about the sector that were participants in the 90s, but now are active in the 2014 market. Uh, we see around in the difference capital made some investments, uh, the strengths of the entrepreneurs, the amount of equity, the sense of alignment, we find it's a different environment where I think you see ownership and we see pride coming back into the marketplace, which is the key things of making money. I think this has helped ourselves attract some people in the marketplace. We have a great team at Difference, but I think that you know right now it's a thriving market, and if we look around, I think there'll be a lot of new Difference capitals coming up, whether it be in the form of a merchant bank or a brokerage firm. I know there's some great people in this room right now, and I encourage everybody to look back and say, hey, you know what? It's low-hanging fruit. At one point in time, this was 50%, and other sectors were a lot less. Now we're on our way up. And like I said, the one thing I do know about Microsoft is follow the trend is your friend. And I think we're on a great road, especially for the young, young kids here in this room. I think it's one of the most exciting times. You know, uh, one of my good friends who mentored me and, uh, you know, when I was starting a hedge fund, I started a small, uh, hedge, uh, small mutual fund company you know, with Paul Sparks in 2011 when I left GMP. Uh, you know, I thought the hedge fund and the two and 20 was great. He looked at me and he just shook his head. He said, I financed McDonald's when they had six restaurants. I was the second hedge fund and second private equity fund in the world. His name is Tony Forsman. His brother, Ted Forsman, who just recently passed away, ran Forsman Little. He ran Forsman Left. And he said, you know, back in the early 80s, we, 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 we put a statement and we published a statement and they published many statements, but this is the one I really took to heart. And he said, the tech entrepreneur, as a creator of the new and a destroyer of the old, is constantly in conflict with convention. He inhabits a world where belief precedes results and where the best possibilities are usually invisible to others. His world is dominated by denial, rejection, difficulty, and doubt. And although, as an innovator, he's increasingly imitated when, when successful, he always remains as an outsider to the establishment. He is usually found to be disturbing and irritating, even unemployable. Yet, ideas and dreams of his become the new reality, and the ever-changing world surrounds us. If he knew the hurdles and friction he would endure, he might never have ventured. But then venture is grappling with the unknown. Well, the tech market is back. And that was a gentleman who's 74 years old. His, his brother, younger brother passed away. And he's now come back as a, a special advisor to our firm. And he's excited to see the youth and the exuberance. And there's going to be a lot of interesting people. And I think that one of the key things here, it's, you know, there's two types of dollars, monetary dollars and physical dollars and emotional dollars. Sometimes the emotional dollars become more valuable. And I think what I see here for the first time is great companies that believe in each other. They got great teams. I've seen a lot of companies from Ottawa to Waterloo and across Canada. And I think that right now I've never seen the ability with these companies, which is not driven off physical dollars, but they want to win. So congratulations for all the companies we've invested in. Hopefully we'll invest with many more that are here at this conference. Nick, 
and Denny Clement. Uh, I thank you for inviting me here to speak, and I wish everyone here, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity to spend some time with all these companies here. They put a lot of hard work into the work they've done here, and uh, I'd like to now introduce Neil Johnson to come aboard here and 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 do the uh, more literal and accounting speech of Difference Capital. Neil Johnson. That's a hard act to follow. It, it always is. Um, but uh, but our, um, <clears throat> we wanted to do two things. We wanted to uh, um, I tell you what, what we think uh, technology uh, and why tech is back and what we're doing about it. And I've got the, I've got the second half of that is, is uh, what we're doing about it. And, and as, uh, as Wex says, I don't have quite the uh, anecdotes uh, from, the, uh, from the trading floor as, as Mike does. But, um, but while, while Mike was, was uh, boldly predicting uh, what, uh, what was going to happen, um, this is what we saw. You know, we saw that um, while uh, our lives were being transformed, the way we shop and communicate uh, and, uh, and, and, and actually work with one measure up 500, 575%, you know, the funding, the, the lifeblood of, of the companies trying to take advantage of this uh, revolution uh, was drying up. And the venture capital funds being raised in this country is, was down 80%. And on the public market side, uh, we had a great year in 2013 in, in, um, in, in tech, but uh, in 2012, um, the, the growth companies, tech media and healthcare, all together were 3% of the, uh, of the index. Um, uh, we believe, we boldly predicted a $200 billion opportunity just in Canada with a sector rotation back to the mean, which is about 15%. And, 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 and let us all pray here that uh, we get back to 2000 when, uh, when growth companies are 28% of the index or be our, uh, like our southern uh, neighbor where growth companies are 32%. But 15% is 200 billion and uh, it's great uh, uh, TSX and I know NGAD is, uh, is here and uh, uh, their presentation late last year was at $21 billion as, uh, was, uh, was invested into the technology sector in, in Toronto in the last uh, year and a half. So that's only 10% uh, of our prediction. So it's just begun. Um, we should all cheer and uh, we can all cheer and we should all cheer that uh, the tech is back um, with, uh, with our um, uh, stocks like that, but uh, but us at Difference Capital, you know, we we think there's much more to do. We believe uh, Canada's best people, our best ideas, and the next great companies are still in a crisis of capital, and and this country, uh, with more capital, can have uh, more global leaders on the technology side, and that's what we set out to do. In 2012, uh, we started by gathering a team of like-minded and energetic people, like uh, uh, led by Mr. Weckerly. Um, but uh, but these people who also have led and in, and financed some of uh, Canada's best tech and media companies. And our mission was simple: to both provide capital and to leverage our networks of uh, finding more capital for, uh, for tech um, and growth companies. And to do this, you need patient capital, and you need a strategy to add value, um, and a large number of, of potential investments, and which, which, we, uh, which we also have. Um, <clears throat> we first set about and raised almost $200 million in the last uh, year and a half, um, we did it in a publicly traded company called uh, now Difference Capital Financial DCF. For all you uh, analysts in the room, Difference Capital Financial or discounted cash flow is, uh, you know, how to remember it. Um, uh, it is our patient capital pool. It's, it's permanent capital. It's not a time uh, fund like a venture capital fund. Um, and, uh, and then we also add value to every company that we, uh, that we invest in by, by following these four uh, steps. We identify the opportunities, 
We structure investments uh, to protect our downside, but uh, to give us uh, growth uh, for both us and the, and the companies. And then we set about with the management team to, uh, to, to add value and to come up with goals uh, to, um, to monetize and to create value um, for all shareholders. And <clears throat> the key is uh, to have uh, multiple exits. Uh, not just the public company, uh, not just just the IPO route, but uh, but exits in in different countries and uh, in different ways. Um, and this way, we're partners with the companies that we uh, that we that we invest in. Um, the most significant opportunity, though, and I know that there's been battles uh, and panels about uh, public markets versus private markets. The simple the simple truth is that the, best, the most significant opportunity is the private company uh, universe. We, um, today there are 38 public technology companies with a market cap of over $100 million. But in Toronto alone, there are 11,000 technology companies that are private. Today's technology companies stay longer, uh, so private for longer or forever. Um, uh, due to the increasing regulatory hurdle of, uh, of going public and, um, and as you know, the, the significant lack of, of capital that's been, uh, that's been attributed to this sector uh, for the last decade. Um, <clears throat> we also uh, see the size of the opportunity in 2013 was uh, very positive. There was 500 million a half a billion dollars raised in the top 10 transactions in Canada. <clears throat> and our portfolio, um, you know, represent tomorrow's, tomorrow's IPO in our eyes. Um, you know, as the sector rotation gathers steam, and as, as Mike said, it's five to seven years, um, as a sustained cycle and an I, a sustained IPO window will emerge, our portfolio is positioned to take advantage of that new capital looking to invest. In our themes of internet, media, technology, SaaS, healthcare, gaming, and payments are all robust sectors and long-term growth potential. But investing in our public stock today gives you access to the IPOs of the future at their pre-IPO valuations. Um, and our results of attracting capital from other sources uh, speak for itself. You know, together with our own capital that, uh, that we've raised, we've advised on, uh, on other companies raising a quarter billion dollars in the first year um, that, we, uh, that we set out uh, helping companies. So to sum up, um, we, uh, we have a chronic underinvestment of tech in related sectors, mean for us a long cycle of new investment opportunities. Most of the companies are private companies and only a fraction will ever choose to go public. But our team and our strategy allows the public investor access to this private universe. And with a long-term outlook and a liquid stock, investors in us can choose their own investment horizon. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Nick, and everyone for their attendance and their uh, interest in technology uh, industries. And we'll, uh, we'll see you for dinner, and thank you very much.